Welcome back to the channel. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be upgrading our brakes to these new Hawk Performance Ceramic brake pads. They are supposed to be ultra low dust, uh, dampen noises, extend the pad and the rotor life. They're supposed to be superior stopping power. So we're going to try them out today. And we also got a package here from GDC. Uh, if you guys don't know what GDC is, they're the Gentleman's Driving Club. Um, we'll open this later and we'll check out the uh, merch inside. Alright, so what do you get when you buy these Hawk Performance brake pads here? So first, um, you get the box of course. You open them up. I've already gone and opened these up just to inspect them. What? P.F. Chang's? Alright, so what was I saying? Um, oh, right. So I already pre-opened these just to inspect them, make sure that the uh, quality is good and all that stuff. So but what you get is this nice, neatly wrapped little brake taco here. We'll open one up. And then you get this nice looking beefy bean burrito of a brake right here. And of course you get four of them. So we're gonna go ahead and install these. Uh, but first we're gonna go ahead and look at this uh, GDC shirt right here. All right, so we're gonna open up this package from the GDC here. Alright, we got this brand new nice shirt, right there. Alright, so I just want to take a moment here just to give a shout out to the GDC right here for sending me the shirt and for sponsoring me. Um, if you go to my Instagram, at Rosenbellion, there is a promo code for the GDC here and you can buy any other merch and get 15% off. Uh, it helps me out and it saves you guys money. So, so I think that's a win-win right there. All right, now we're gonna go back to your regularly scheduled programming. All right, so we're gonna start by taking off this tire. Um, no, it doesn't look like that. Normally, I already took out the bolts and I already lifted it up a little bit so the tire started coming out. So we're just gonna jack up the car here. All right, that should be high enough. So a trick here for removing the lug nuts off your tire um, is make sure you put your parking brake on. If you put your parking brake on, it stiffens up the car so your car doesn't wiggle back and forth as you're trying to take off the lug nuts. Uh, just make sure you, um, of course, take the parking brake off, chuck the car before you uh, uh, go ahead and try to take apart the uh, brake calipers. If you don't undo the parking brake or take off the parking brake, it's going to be very hard and very difficult. So we're just going to move the tire out of the way. Alright, now it's a good idea before you start taking any other bolts besides the, or any other nuts off, you want to go ahead and just hit it with some WD-40 or some PB Blaster. The other one's down here. Let that soak in for a couple seconds, a couple minutes. Um, 
it really depends how hard and you tightened on the last time you changed the brake pads or how hard you know your shop did it so there are two bolts here generally speaking um, the brake systems and vehicles are usually about the same so even if you don't have a 2011 Mustang like I do um, it'll be practically the same for a 2007 Nissan Versa 2015 Nissan Altima, a 96 F-150, just about any other car really. So to change the pads, we're going to take off two 12 bolt, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to take off two 12 millimeter bolts here. And that will take off the caliper, and then we're just going to shimmy the caliper off the uh, old brake pad. So I like to start at the top, but once you start doing this in your own car you'll find a better way that works for you so what I like to do is loosen it enough um, just so that it's about a couple centimeters away from the actual uh, brake caliper I don't take the uh, bolt out completely uh, just so it doesn't fall off right on me when I'm taking the bottom one off. And that little bit of WD-40 really does make a difference. And these are the uh, two bolts that hold the brake caliper in place. As you see, I usually like to put some anti-seize on there, so I'm just gonna wipe these off off camera and apply some more anti-seize. You don't have to, but it makes it a lot easier when you go and replace your brakes, and it makes the job a lot quicker. So we're just gonna wiggle the caliper back and forth but before we take that off completely, we're just going to go ahead and get a bungee cord. Alright, so what we're going to do with the bungee cord is we're going to put the brake caliper on it. You don't want to just let the brake caliper hang because you could mess up the brake line. Brake lines are very fragile and delicate. And you just want to let it hang. Like so, I got the brake caliper on the bungee cord and what I like to do is, is I like to hang it from the spring, um, right there, the spring on the strut, uh, but you can hang it anywhere. If you don't have a... If you don't have a bungee cord available, uh, you could use a small jack stand and just put the caliper on top of the jack stand or a small paint can. Really you can just put it about anything under it just to make sure you don't have a lot of weight on the brake line. Um, it also depends on your vehicle size. If it's low to the ground, you might even get away with putting it on the ground if it's that low. Uh, if you got a truck, maybe get a buddy. <laughs> he can hold it for you while you're doing this. Alright, so now what we're going to do is just we're going to pry out these old pads. I like to use a, a screwdriver just to get it started, but you want to be very careful. And while you're changing your brake pads, it's a good idea just to look at the rotor. Make sure it's not warped. This feels really smooth to me so I can probably stay on there maybe for another year or two hmm. so what we're going to do to put the new pads on is we're going to wipe this clean and Hawk actually sends you this little packet which they call gearhead grease pack. Uh, it's for high temperature brake parts lubricants. 
Um, and what you're going to do is just pretty much spread it like if it's butter, just evenly across the back of the pad, not the front, the back. That just helps with the frictions from the brake pistons and the brake pads. Makes a little bit quieter, a little less um, heat build up. And that way you get a nice smooth uh, brake when you apply the brake. Alright, so upon inspecting these further, these actually aren't that bad. They still have plenty of life. But since I'm going to upgrade the brakes, and I already bought these brakes anyway to upgrade it. I'm just going to go ahead and replace them. Um, but see, usually once they reach this line or some brake pads have an indicator strip on this on one of the pegs up here. Once one of the radiator pegs starts touching the rotor and it starts making a squeaky noise, that's when you need to change them. Or if it has some other kind of indicator um, but usually the line is usually where I change them once they don't have that line to let any extra uh, brake dust out is when I like to change them uh, but since we already got these we're gonna go ahead and change them anyway so we're just gonna wipe the back of the pad down with our shop towel just clean any dirt or grease there I also clean my hands it's not a bad idea to wear any gloves. I unfortunately ran out. You also get a nice little decal from Hawk if you would like to put this on the back of your window or whatever. Um, give them some um, some advertising or show them your pride, whatever. So we're just going to take a couple dabs. You don't want to use the pack is for all four pads, so you don't want to use the entire pack on one pad. So what we're going to do is just with your finger or with your gloved finger, you just want to kind of spread that out. It's a nice blood red right there. It'll match your cherry red caliper covers if you have that. You won't see this, of course, but you'll know it's there. I'm going to add a little bit more. And you can go ahead and wipe your finger on your pants or your towel or just take another pad and just, since this never got any dirt on it, just wipe it there. The ones in the box should theoretically be clean. And again, we're just going to Put a couple dabs on here. There, nice and even. And you're gonna wanna unwrap your other beef brake burrito here. And just wipe your finger off. That way you don't waste any of this gear head. Uh, grease. Alright, so what we're going to do next is we're going to put the brake pads on and you can tell there's a curve right here and that's how you determine the sides that are going to go in. So you always want to go with the curve. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and install them. And again, remember to go with the curve. Um, that is usually a rule for every car, but there are some oddballs out there, so just uh, a good idea would be to snap a picture of the setup before you take them out. That way you know where everything goes. And since they're brand new, you are going to find some resistance. Um, with them going in. Now we're going to go ahead and put the back one on. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so as I was putting it in, the little uh, spring leg or whatever actually came off. I've used Hawk before and I've never had this problem. Um, so I'm not really sure what happened there. It could have been my fault. Maybe I put too much pressure on it. Um, but it looks like it snaps pretty easy back in. So we're gonna go ahead and try this again. So putting the back pad is the same. You're gonna use the same method to put in the back pad as you did the front pad. And by the back pad, I mean the pad closest or inside the V. So you're going to use the same process to put the pad on the inside of the rotor as you did on the outside. Not too difficult. So now what you're going to have to do to finish this job is you need to press these two pistons. Uh, your car might have one or I think they go up to four. Um, you're going to push those pistons in. You, there's a special tool to do it. You can also get by using a C-clamp and a block of wood and just crank it down until it goes back. Um, it's also a good idea to open the cap on your brake fluid reservoir and that just helps um, push the fluid back in. Another thing you can use if you don't have a scrap piece of wood is you can actually use your old brake pad. You just put this side against the pistons and put the clamp side on the face and just clamp it. And after you've recessed both pistons or the one piston or however, however many other pistons you have all the way back to the starting point, all you gotta do is just slide that over. All right, as I'm finishing up this video, I hear the girlfriend upstairs, she's live streaming. You guys can follow her too at Micah's Illustrations on Instagram. I'll put the link for you below. All right, so after we finesse the caliper back on to the brake pads and the rotor, we screwed everything down. What I like to do is I like to go from a one quarter drive ratchet to a 3 8 ratchet just so I can get a true sense of how tight I'm tightening it um, that way I don't over tighten it um, but if you're new you guys should definitely use a torque wrench you know look at the specs make sure you tighten it to spec I feel comfortable comfortable enough doing it uh, without looking at the spec because I've done it a lot of times <laughs> um, but there you go after 30 45 minutes you have just successfully changed your brake pads and now you will feel proud of yourself because you did it so you can do this 30 40 minutes per side on a weekend or a weeknight after work you can even make it into a date you know your girl or boyfriend on the other side you on one side and you get done twice as fast of course the more you do this, the faster you'll get at it. So you might even be able to do both sides in half an hour or 45 minutes. Uh, you use the same, same steps on one side as you do the other side. Nothing changes from side to side. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. When you go ahead and tighten the tires, make sure if you have five studs, you want to do a star pattern. I'll put a guide below if you don't have five, if you have four or six. Um, the way you tighten them is very important. So I will put a guide for you guys below. Again, my name is Rosenbellion, and I have just showed you how to do the brake pads, and trust me, once you do them by yourself, you'll feel like you can do anything. So if you found this video at all in any way helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you like the content, go ahead and subscribe. If you don't want to miss any new car videos or any new DIY videos, go ahead and go ahead and hit that notification bell. I try to have a video out for you guys every week. So I'll see you next time. And again, don't be afraid to like, comment, or subscribe. And don't forget to comment. 
And remember guys, this isn't specific just for a 2011 Mustang. You can do it on any other car. Um, all the steps are basically the same. You might have to change a couple things, but I'm sure you guys are smart enough to figure it out. Also, I want to see what you guys are working on. Let me know on Instagram. Go ahead and tag me on the stuff you guys are working on. If you're doing brakes, if you're doing oil change, take a picture. Let me know.